it was just the most massive thing I've ever seen. I, to tell you the honest truth, I thought, well, we're the only ones left on this planet. Something's happened. It missed something here. The fear that went in me when I seen it was just un... Like, the feeling, I'd say it was fear, but I've never felt that feeling before in my entire life. It's a weird feeling. Like, you can't explain it when you don't know. You feel like you're being followed, but you don't know what it is. We had two to our right, another one in front of us, another one to the left, and another one just across the road, shaking the daylight out of the tree. All we get is a big red eye. I remember waking up and looking at the end of the bed and there was a figure there, almost insect-like, and then I blacked out. Welcome to the show, everyone. My name is Cade Moyer, and you are listening to the Believe Paranormal and UFO podcast. If you have had an encounter and would like to share it, please get in touch with me. My email address is believepod at gmail.com. If you enjoy the podcast, be sure to leave us a rating or review wherever you listen and head on over to our website, believepod.com, and consider becoming a member to get bonus episodes and video content. Tonight I'm joined by Shannon and Shannon's had a lifetime of unexplained activity in her life. Shannon, welcome to the show. Hi Kate, how are you going? I'm good. You are the only guest that's ever given me a false start on the uh, the intro for the podcast and that's hilarious. <laughs> I was just going to let you do your thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's funny, I, I used to do a podcast with a friend and any time I was doing the intro he would always trip me up and it just reminded me of that but no thank <laughs> Shannon thank you so much for coming on it's, it's great to have you here no worries tell me about the the weird stuff that started happening in your life because I believe it happened to you from quite a young age yeah it did so uh, I mean it's it started for me growing up in the house that my parents own um I mean I would have night terrors every night and like not just normal night like screaming crying for no apparent reason I'd be absolutely fine lights go off you know mum and dad go to bed or whatever um and I just would kick and scream and refuse to go to sleep um and that happened for years and years and years um and I just my mum could not get out of me you know what was happening or why she she just I mean, I had a discussion with her the other day um, and she just said that all you used to repeat was, you know, there's something like looking at me or, or something like really vague like that. Um, and I kind of recently tried to <laughs> look back and remember and all I remember is just something my mum would leave the door open a crack. Um, I was afraid of the dark um, and something like peering in to my room that crack or or peeking over the edge of the bed kind of thing um and it you know it did stop when I became a teenager for a while and then strangely enough um same house same room the door is in the corner of my bedroom um back home and you know I got I don't know 17 um into adulthood and obviously until I moved out at 18 um but there would just be this big black mass in the corner and it would it was it wasn't like trying to fall asleep and I would see it it would be like same corner as the door I would be asleep and I would wake up and immediately look over to that corner and just feel this like sense of dread and just see this kind of black mass you turn on you know I'd turn on the light and whatnot and it disappear um but you know I haven't been afraid of the dark since I was little but yeah that would just happen every night for years how old were you when that first started happening to you? So, uh, I was about five years old when all of the night terrors and stuff started happening. And that's like as far back as I remember for the night terrors um, and seeing something peeking through the cracks. And, you know, um, before that, I lived in a previous house and I would sleep with a light on, but I wasn't afraid, didn't have any night terrors and stuff like that. Um, and that kind of the night terrors and seeing whatever it was um, kind of went on till I was like 14, 15. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. So like seriously embarrassing, but um, 
And it wasn't even to the, you know, when I got into teenager years, it wasn't that I was afraid of the dark or anything like that. It was just, I would just have extreme night terrors, could feel something in that bedroom. I shared a room with my little sister at the time. Um, and then later on, she moved out into the another room by herself and I kept that room. And when she moved out of that room, the one that's still mine to this day, uh, she refused to sleep in there. Um, and she's two years younger than me, um, you know, not experienced as much stuff that I know of. But, um, yeah, she refuses to sleep in there. Um, and then, you know, it stopped for a few years. I didn't have any night terrors or anything like that. Became a teenager, obviously not afraid of the dark anymore, anything like that. Um, and then I moved out for a little bit when I was 18, came back. Um, and then the, this dark mass in the corner kind of started happening, Um I suffer with like a bit of depression and stuff like that. So I do have a sneaky suspicion that it might be because like it's attracted to negative energy maybe. Um, But yeah, when I was little with the night terrors and stuff, I just remember, I don't remember. It's a bit fuzzy because obviously I was pretty young, but I do remember it being like short, evil looking, you know, and then as a teenager, adult, it was like just this big, black dark mass like really horrible feeling um and didn't feel nice at all but it, no features or anything like that what i find interesting about that is the fact that this thing showed itself potentially in two different ways and i do i do have a couple of questions about it because when you were having the night terrors when you woke up were you seeing this thing in the room so what it would be like, it was, you know, I call them night terrors, but it was literally like I wasn't even asleep yet. So my sister, we had bunk beds. My sister was in like two stories. So she was in the one next to me and she'd be fast asleep, two years younger, not feel anything, not be afraid, nothing. My mum would like turn off the light, you know, say goodnight, leave the door open a crack, fine. Ten minutes in, I would see this being whatever it is and just start screaming and crying and refuse to go to sleep um, every night. And it was just, I just, I remember feeling so scared. And, you know, I've, like I explained beforehand, I've felt, you know, positive energies and stuff like that. And, you know, when you can just tell the difference. Um, And I don't think I realized that until later on in life. But, yeah, it was really weird, really weird. Um, my parents are in the process of selling that house at the moment. I'm trying to get them to convince me to do a little <laughs> little ghost hunting session. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would just, you know, one more time for, for good luck, yeah. I guess. Yeah, try to figure out what's in there. So when you're in there, did the, uh, did the entity ever interact with you by the, no. the terror that you were showing? No, so I would just see something like peer around the door um, or appear over the side of my bed. It would just always look at me or like smile at me in a really evil way. Never, it wouldn't like speak to me or, you know, um, anything like that. It didn't never touch me um, or anything like that. It would just look at me and I'd be bloody scared, <laughs> I have to say. Yeah, no, that's um, terrifying. I mean, if I saw some type of evil little looking thing in my room and I'm a child, you know, I'm, I'm crapping my dax. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I've, I haven't seen anything like that since. Um, like everything that I've seen since then being a teenager adult, it's always just been more of like a black mask kind of thing. Um, so it almost makes me wonder, you know, maybe, you know, when they say kids can see things, adults can't, maybe I was just on that vibrational, <laughs> you know, frequency i was able to see see it and then as a teenager i was just able to see the energy that's a really really interesting viewpoint on that i didn't even consider yeah. that because yeah, well, that's how I, yeah because i had the i was having a, a different theory is that i was wondering if that was your your child's mind projecting yeah, well, it what been. it knew yeah. something scary was supposed to look like yeah, this is true. This is true. Honestly, I love horror movies and stuff now. Um, but back then, I i mean, I didn't watch my first horror movie until I was like 19. Like, <laughs> I love them. I love them now, but I used to be so afraid. And so I wasn't really exposed to anything, you know, that 
you know when they say when you have a dream and you can only dream faces that you've seen before? Yeah. Like, I wasn't really exposed to much stuff like that. Like, in terms of horror and scary things, I had a very sheltered life because I was so scared to go to sleep and my mum was like, not tempting fate. Um, But, yeah, you could be right. Like, maybe that's just what my brain um, wanted to see, you know, rather than... I mean, there's heaps, there's heaps of theories or, you know, it could have been, you know, if people want to say it's a demon or whatever, it could be it was just trying to coax me by being something little. <laughs> I don't know. I like your theory better than mine. I think yours is yeah. way better. <laughs> well, that, that's kind of like what I've always thought of because of the fact that I've only ever seen as an adult one figure that scared the shit out of me, honestly. Um but uh, it's someone else is with me, so it wasn't. It's not just me, you know, <laughs> seeing things by myself. Um, but yeah, when I was little, I just remember like obviously the memory is fuzzy, but I do remember it being so much more vivid and scary. And then as a teenager, adult, just this big cloud of just swirling darkness. I wonder if there is a psychological aspect to that, or if it's if it is like you say that the that children are a little bit less subject to i guess the the mainstream effect of of the paranormal and yeah. just a, a little bit more in tune with that side of the 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 world the universe yeah well i saw this really interesting little video on youtube i suppose i think ted talk did it or whatever um maybe cut this bit out but <laughs> it was they were talking about how animals can see you know a larger spectrum than we can and how that relates to the paranormal. It was super interesting. Um, but then I was kind of thinking to myself, you know, if this is, if kids, with kids vibrate on a frequency that will they just like stay on a frequency that we, you know, we've been beaten down by life and have so many other factors to keep ourselves on a high frequency and they're just existing and having a good life. So for me, I think that maybe I was just on the same frequency as that being and I could see it. Um, and yeah, <laughs> now I can't as much. Yeah, no, I think it's a, I think it's a super, super great theory. And I, it's not the first time I've heard it. Um, you know, I'm a big believer that kids see things that we don't just because they have this completely unadulted mind and there's no real, preference burnt into that no no well they, they haven't figured out what they're fully afraid of yet you know like nowadays someone might see something and say oh i look like a killer clown you know at this age but it probably wasn't a killer clown it's just what you're afraid of that you're you're seeing it you know did your little sister ever mention that she was terrorized by something in that room no, so I, I, I've actually never spoken about this with her. Um, but all I know, she, I mean, she sits out soundly. Like, she would get annoyed <laughs> that I had, you know, that's why, obviously, when you get older, you change rooms. But she would get annoyed that I had night terrors and stuff like that. Um, but she was fine. And then it wasn't until she moved out of that bedroom that we shared and then into her own she, you know, if she we had family stay over and she would not sleep in my room with me. Um, she said she didn't like the energy. She didn't like the way it felt. She felt scared. And I'm like, you used to share this room with me. Like, it's our room. Um, but, yeah, it's like she got a little taste of what it was like to not live in a haunted room and <laughs> didn't want to come back. Yeah, she uh, maybe she just didn't know any other way. And then she moves in, in into this new room and it's just this breath of, relaxation of there ain't no scary thing in the corner looking at me anymore yeah i know it, it's weird like I, i'll have to have a chat with her um but yeah all i know is that she just doesn't like my room she will not go in there yeah that's that's really really interesting like just to to go through that whole life and her not even ever bring it up just to say that no i'm just not vibing no. it like we're all, my family are pretty spiritual. We're all pretty witchy, pretty pretty spiritual people. Um, but yeah, that that's just not something that we've ever kind of sat there and had to think about. But I'll have to ask her. Um, even like, so I grew up. We had several dogs. 
throughout my life. I'm, I'm not a huge animal person, but um, m- my dogs, before they sadly passed away, they kind of had this little unspoken deal with me, obviously unspoken, but it was like they can jump and lick and go into everyone else's room, but that like they wouldn't do that to me, but they were still kind of protective. So my dogs would sleep in the doorway of my bedroom, but they wouldn't ever come in. Um, and they wouldn't always do it. It was honestly, as an adult, times when I would feel something, I'd wake up and the dog would be in the doorway. Um, so that was real weird. Um, they, yeah, they wouldn't come into my room. Um, so I'm not quite sure, you know, why or what they were seeing or feeling, but they were like my little guard dogs, they're beautiful. Um, but yeah, they would go into everyone else's bedroom. It'd be fine. But yeah. Did they, uh, this is going to be a weird question, but like, did they ever growl at the room oh, or anything like okay. that? You have no idea. <laughs> so sometimes I'd be, it, I don't know why, it's like a horror movie, yes, but it was always when I'm home alone. <laughs> so <laughs> when I was home alone, I would, you know, just be chilling in my room or wherever in the house and I'd hear the dogs like, go crazy and mind you like they're little multi shits it's like they are so little chill and not aggressive at all and they would just go crazy as if like someone is trying to break into the house like to the point where I would sometimes if it got too bad I'd call my mum and be like I don't know what to do they're not calming down like I think someone's outside um and you know I'd, I'd have a look and I'd go outside and no one's there and all the doors are locked and the windows are closed um not always at my bedroom. Sometimes um, they'd just be in the doorway barking, but a lot of it at the time it was when I'm home alone in, and I'm in my room, they'd be barking like at other points of the house, but staring at a random wall. Like, <laughs> not like, you know, into a room or anything like that. Like, something really insignificant that I'd just be so puzzled at. Um, yeah, crazy. That's not unsettling at all. <laughs> It's super unsettling. But the weird thing is, is like I go back home now um, and mostly feel fine. Like it's home, you know. It's just that these experiences that I have, but I'm not, I'm not really like scared about them anymore. Obviously, at the time they were scary, but I go back and I don't, you know, I don't refuse to go into that room or anything like that. Um, so, yeah. So, Shannon, you mentioned that you had another encounter with the with kind of like a a shadow being that was kind of terrifying is that something that you're willing to talk about and now a quick word from our sponsor also are you wanting more content why not become a believe plus member you'll get access to exclusive podcasts and episodes that aren't available to the public not only that you'll also get our regular feed without any ads Head to believepod.com forward slash plus to sign up today for just $5 a month. Yeah, so there's been a couple. Um, I suppose the one, like I've had a couple in England when I lived there, um, but the one in Australia, um, it's actually in the same suburb as this my, my parents' house. Um, and I grew up, like I've lived here since I was like five, so, you know... We know all the parks, we know all the pathways, like the routes, stuff like that. I was with my friend and it was getting dark and we were taking our dogs for a walk. Um, And so where you kind of go, you know, through the roads and stuff like that, there's a little gateway um, all blocked off with just like a little pathway where you can go back into the parks towards all of our houses. It's kind of like a secluded... um, forgotten the word but um a state in a secluded estate so you would go through this pathway into there it's getting a bit dark it's really windy i think it's like spring this is a few years ago um and the dogs are fine like we've been walking for like 40 minutes they're all happy um i'm talking with my friend and like we're getting towards this little gate and i mean when we say we have passed through this gate like a million times you know um absolutely familiar we know you you know when you are so familiar with it you know exactly what shape like what the shapes are so it's starting to get dark and you're like oh that's just a post like that's that tree 
you know, I was so familiar with it and we're walking towards it and I'm with my friend and she, her, both of her parents passed away. Like she does not believe in the afterlife. She's not, she was a real tough nut, not scared of anything. I, I would talk to her and she's like, my parents, like they're just gone. You know, they're not in a better place. They're not haunting my house. They're just gone. Um, and so, you know, she knows that I'm witchy. We're walking towards it and the dogs start to get a little bit growly and barky and we're just going, oh, that's a bit weird, but, you know, whatever. Walking towards it and the dogs start to waver and I look ahead and in, in the middle of this little gap in the gate where we're meant to go through to get into this park is this, like, huge, like, six-foot, like, oh, I'm getting scared just talking about it. Six foot, like, mass. Um, and you can't really see figures, but um, features, but you can at the same time. It's, it's hard to explain. So it's, it's windy night. Like, you can hear all the leaves rustling and stuff like that. And you just look at this figure and it had a, so cliche again, I know, a big, long black coat on. So a bit, you can't see any body features, just a big, long black coat and a big black hat. And the face, <laughs> oh, I'm getting so shaky. The face was like a white oval, like like paper white. Um, I don't even know, like co the contrast between the hat and the coat and the face was just astounding. Yet, like, there was no features. Like, I couldn't see any eyes or any nose or anything like that. And... I mention it's windy because, you know, usually with a, you've got a big coat on or a hat, like it will it would rustle, like you would see the flapping of the coat or anything, like it was still as if, oh, I'm just getting so shaky, as if it was like frozen in time. And we're still walking towards it at this point, like it, you know, it's a couple of, it's pretty far away, but we're walking there. And the dog, the closer we get, the dog is going mental. And my friend who's with me, who does not believe in anything like this, you know, my heart's starting to beat. I'm looking at it in my mind. I haven't said anything yet, but I'm just thinking like, what is that? Like, maybe they've put something there. Like, the closer we get, the more I'm like, oh, my God, what is that? Um, and my friend looks at me and she's like, Shannon, what is that? <laughs> she just like spoke what was on my mind yeah and, and I like you know when you're thinking it and I'm like maybe I'm just the one seeing this because the dogs are starting to go a bit haywire but I'm thinking in my mind like am I crazy am I getting scared for no reason like I've got goosebumps all over my body I remember like the back the hair on the back of my neck like prickling I remember being so scared and we were still like walking towards it like we hadn't stopped and she <laughs> she goes no Shannon seriously what is that like, and the dogs are starting to bark and, like, refusing to walk towards it. And, you know, I've never seen her scared before, my friend. She's such a tough nut. And I'm, like, shitting myself. <laughs> We're still walking towards it. And then we get, like, I don't know, say 10 steps from it. And, you know, we've gone, come on, dog, like, trying to get them to go through. And they just wouldn't. And we both looked at each other and we're like, run. And we bolted all the way back. Like, it was like we had been on a 40-minute walk. Like, we literally ran with the dogs all the way home, locked the doors. And we both sat on the couch and looked at each other, like, shaking. And she was like, I know I don't believe in this shit, but that was fucking scary. <laughs> like, to this day, we don't know what it is. Um but I remember, I'm scared now, like I'm trembling, but I remember at the time, just, I, I have no idea. It wasn't a person. Like, I, I know people are going to say, like, you know, it's probably just a man standing there, but a big a big guy, like, we're two pretty relatively, like, big women. Like, we, we gym a lot, we're muscly. You know, we've got four dogs on the leash, you know, how three, how many we had that day. Um, you'd think you would move out the way, to let people through or you would flinch or your jacket would be, you know, flapping about a little bit like it was bloody windy um, and it was just scary. <laughs> I have to say, you're crazy for walking towards this thing. <laughs> well, no, because, you know what, like, I know I'm crazy, but because my friend doesn't believe in any of this kind of stuff, I was, in my mind before she said anything, I was going, maybe I'm just the one seeing this because I've, you know, experienced things before. I know the dogs were going a bit haywire, but, 
I was walking towards it like, surely not. No, nah, it's, just, it's just a man. Like, it's just a dude standing there. Like, he'll move out the way. It'll be fine. Like, trying to, like, justify it. But I'm genuinely shaking right now. Like, even talking about it just reminds me of how scared I was. <laughs> Um, it, it's kind of like the, the unknown and the, the level of danger could have just been so huge and you're just continuing to walk towards it. I mean, we bolted, like really did run the opposite direction when we got like 10 steps away. But um, all I can say is that like, you know, I know we, we both saw it because before I had even explained what I saw, she turned around and was like, I saw this, this, and this. And I was like, oh, so did I like, you know, so it, it was cool because it wasn't just me seeing it for once. Yeah, because that, that was a, a question that I was going to ask you. And I, I mean, you've already answered it, but I was I was just curious, like, if you did have the thought process of, am I the only one seeing this and are the dogs reacting? For sure, for sure. Because I do believe, like we've discussed before, like animals and kids, they see things that most of us can't, right? Um, so... And I've had my dogs at home react to things that I've reacted to as well. So in my mind, before she said anything, I definitely was thinking like, you know, maybe it's just me. Like, maybe it won't hurt us. It'll just like be there and then go like, you know. Um, but honestly, like, I cannot stress. I'm free. Like, it was the over the overwhelming fear is what makes me think that it wasn't something positive. Um, but yeah, and like since then, I think I was probably like 19 at the time. So like since then, you know, you hear things about people seeing, I don't know, like hat man or whatever, whatever they call it. You know, when they have sleep paralysis and they see the hat man or something like that, like that obviously like fits into the description. Um, but it was just terrifying. Yeah, it, it has Hatman written all over it, to be honest. It does, but, like, <laughs> I didn't know about Hatman at the time. So, you know, I was um, talking with my auntie the other day, and she grew up in the area as well. Um, and it's a pretty rough area. So, like, we grew up in a rough area. So, like, walking... You know, it wouldn't be uncommon for a, a man to just be like chilling in a park, you know, like as it's getting dark or something like that. Like, so us like walking towards it, like we grew up in such an area that we were like, you know, we'll move like if we need to, you know what I mean? So, like, yeah, it was just crazy. But um, I was speaking to my auntie the other day and she, I think she was pulling my leg, but she was like when I was at high school, because it's right near a high school and primary school that we grew up in. When I was in high school, an old man in, in that estate that we live in like died and he would always wear a hat and stuff and maybe it was him. <laughs> and uh, I'm pretty sure she was pulling my leg, but that's the only thing. Like she found, she was pretty convincing, but <laughs> um, I think it's bullshit to be honest. Yeah, I think she's having you on a bit. <laughs> yeah. Once you get in on the scary goth. That's the type of encounter that would just stick with you forever. And I guess what I like about that encounter to, you know, to take a positive away from it is that, you know, you, you had it with someone who was essentially a non-believer. Which she still is. Like, um, we don't speak a lot anymore, but, um, yeah, she, like I said, she's, both of her parents are unfortunately passed away um, and she doesn't believe that they're around or anything like that. Um, yeah, she really does not believe in the afterlife or, or ghosts or demons or anything like that um, still. So <laughs> I, I just remember her being scared at the time um, and reacting exactly the same way that I reacted. But, you know, if you believe, you believe. Yeah, and that's exactly it. And, uh, you know, you can't really go out there and try to convert non-believers, I think, no, because, not. you know, that's no. no one's job to really do that. No, no. I, honestly, I think that, I think for me, because it happened, it started happening from such a young age and um, my family are pretty open-minded. So I think that I've just been kind of exposed to it. 
um, that kind of resulted me in being spiritual and a believer. But, you know, if you haven't been exposed to that, it's going to take something pretty huge to completely change your whole belief system. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's it's essentially these people would need to have a paradigm shifting event happen. And it happens. Like, it, it genuinely happens. I've had people on the podcast that have had it happen to them. And, yeah, they go from being a non-believer to being a full-on hooked in. Yeah. I'm, I'm investigating this stuff every weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I get that. I get that. Um, yeah, so that, honestly, was probably the scariest thing that I've encountered. Um because it was just so, like, I mean, it was a few years ago now and it is vivid in my mind. And I, and even when I was telling the story, like, I started shaking, like, I still feel as scared as I did then talking about it. So, you know, that for me is like one of the things where I'm like, nope, <laughs> I don't, I, I don't actually think I've been through that gate since. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. It, it, I really was scared. Um, yeah, it was just so negative, so dark. I mean, the dogs were scared. It just... And the fact that it scared my friend, which might not mean a lot to people listening, but she really is like a very, you know, if someone's giving you a hard time, she's who you go to. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah tough as nails um, type of character. Yeah, exactly. So the fact that she was really spooked um, and mentioned it before me, that really rattled me as well. Yeah. Yeah, I I completely understand. So, yeah. Shatam, what do you think it was that you saw that day? Honestly, I don't know. I haven't like I haven't even done research. Like I haven't sat there and like tried to Google stuff like that. I don't know what it was. I just know that it scared the bejeebus out of me. Um, I don't know. I I don't know if it was like a dark entity um i don't know and like i said we live in a pretty rough area a lot of bad things happen around here um so it could be attracted to that energy i don't know i don't know yeah it that's a that's a really interesting thought actually you know the the fact that the the area may be holding a lot of bad energy like a bad vibe that it attracts this type of this entity well you know like i definitely do believe in you know when people say you smile at someone and they smile back and like that law of attraction i definitely believe that you know that's great if people want to go out and manifest and, and attract good things to them to like do it you know it's possible but i do think that without even trying negative energy and it will attract negative energy. Um, so that's why I was saying, like, you know, struggling with mental illness and stuff like that for myself. That's why I do think that I tend to attract negative entities um, without even trying to. I just think that it's natural and that's the vibration that I'm on and they're just joining the bandwagon. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, and I, I don't think that's, uh, you know... Uh, obscure thought to have because a lot of people who are in a not great place tend to kind of not invite this type of activity into their lives but they're more likely to experience something like that yeah no and and speaking from experience like i do believe that that you know um these things these experiences that I've spoken about have only pretty much happened, but obviously you can't, when you're little, you don't know. But um, as a teenager adult, only pretty much happened like when I've been in a pretty bad place. Um, I mean, not like, you know, but not highlights of my life kind of thing. Um, So yeah, I just do think that negative things are attracted to negative energy. Absolutely. It's uh, it's kind of the balance of the universe, you know, that with with every positive thing, a negative thing has to happen and the negative thing has to go somewhere. Yeah, for sure. Um, like I said before, like I've definitely felt positive things. Um, I work really closely with 
I call them my spirit guides um, and, <laughs> and the universe and stuff like that in um, my practice. And, you know, I'm definitely able to attract positive things as well. Um, I do a lot of manifestation, stuff like that. And it's possible. I have experienced it. It's great. I've never seen a po- like a, a positive feeling being or, you know, whatever we want to call it. Um, but I've definitely felt it and felt it around me and had signs and messages. And um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I, I do think it can, it's a balance. It can go either way. But for me, unfortunately, I'm able to see the negative pretty well. <laughs> I wonder if there's a reason for that. Like, I wonder if the the negativity is an easier energy to manifest than a positive oh, one. sure. You know, like... I do, I mean, you know, anyone suffering with mental illness will know, like, giving up is the easiest option, you know, um, not working on yourself or, you know, outside of mental illness, not working on yourself and not trying to be a be- better person and stuff like that is the harder option. So being negative is so easy. It's natural to people, you know. Um, it It's natural to be like, oh, damn, I've... I've spilt my milk and then cry about it all day rather than like I can just buy more milk you know it's easier to um so yeah it's for sure it's easier to attract the negative than the positive and that's why it's hard work but that's why it's rewarding as well um so when I do get these messages from my spirit guides or anything like that it you can tell it's positive you can tell it's real and and you've worked for it and you've earned it and you know, it's light. Um, but when you feel the negative, you feel the negative, you know? Yeah, I just find it really thought-provoking that the how the real-life world kind of scenarios can have such an impact on the spiritual world. Yeah, for sure. Um, if you, you know, look up, which I'm definitely no expert, but if you start looking up like you know, um, frequencies and the earth's vibrations and stuff like that, all that hippy-dippy stuff, which I love. Um, You know, they they talk about stuff like that all the time. Like, you'll only attract what you put out and stuff like that. So, you know, if you're really down on your luck and you're having a bad time, whatever it is, you're going to attract that kind of stuff into your life. Absolutely. Um, I'm a big believer of that. Yeah, for sure. Me too. Um, so I'm not, you know, mad about attracting these things. I haven't, you know, interacted with them or anything like that. Um, only one time, which I can talk about um, in England, I've been grabbed um, and that was fucking scary. <laughs> but like, um, yeah, like other than that, I've never really interacted in like a physical way. So I don't think that I'm necessarily like asking them to come to me. I think I'm just able to see them. So before we wrap up, Shannon, I do have to hear about how you've been grabbed by a shadow man. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, fair enough. Um, no, I was living in England um, with my, I was staying with my auntie and uncle at the time. Um, they lived in this little village and it was right down the street from a cemetery. Uh, I would go there a lot um, because I love cemeteries. I feel very at home there. And I was asleep and you know when you wake up and you have that feeling like you're falling and it jolts you awake and it's like you can feel it in your whole body. Um, So I felt it was similar to that. Um, I felt I was asleep in my dream that I was whatever dream I was having. I felt something grab my ankle and pull and I woke up as if like like jolted awake and like even before, and I opened my eyes and I was like, half, I had been dragged halfway off the bed. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah. So like you think it's a dream. I thought it was a dream. You know, it was just one of those, oh, I'm falling kind of things, except I didn't feel like I was falling. I felt like I was being pulled. Um, and yeah, I, I opened my eyes and I was halfway off the bed. Like something really had pulled me um, from my ankles. So yeah, <laughs> I slept with a lamp on that night. Do not blame me. I would have slept with spotlights and floodlights everywhere after <laughs> an event like that. Yep, the feet were tucked under the doona. Like, yeah, it was pretty scary. Um, but, yeah. What what happens to the mindset after something like that happens? You know, like, 
it's weird because like the night or whenever it happens, like at the time, obviously you're spooked. Um, I think I probably like got up and watched the movie for a bit, calmed down. Um, but in that same room, like I had seen another shadow figure in the same, like, you know, um, in that room. And at the time you're spooked, but then when I talk about it now, like I obviously get a little bit jittery, like I can feel it in me that I was scared, but, um, yeah, it, you calm down after a bit. Like, I think for me, I've had so many experiences that it's not that you get used to it, but you almost form like coping mechanisms. Well, you, <laughs> you know? learn how to deal with it. Yeah. You, yeah, exactly. So it's spooky and it's scary to talk about. And at the time you, there's millions, like, why is this happening? Like, what was that? You know, do it. You know, am I only like I said? Am I the only one seeing it? Probably, um, but yeah, I definitely feel and see and hear things that other people don't. You live a very interesting life, Shannon, and <laughs> it's it's kind of bittersweet that you you have these interactions, and it's unfortunate that the majority of them seem to have a negative vibe to them. Um, yeah, you know, I I do hope that they obviously swing to the other side because I I do believe that, you know, there should be a balance to the universe and I feel it would be a complete injustice to, to you and your, I guess your sensitivity to the, the spirit world to only cop the, I guess the, the nasty end of it all. Yeah. Like definitely as I'm getting older and, um, I'm practicing more and, you know, learning about vibrations and frequencies and the universe and whatnot. Um, I'm definitely experiencing more positive. Um, and I think that's just something, you know, I don't think that that necessarily comes natural to me. It might come natural to other people, but I'm practicing and I'm trying to get there and I'm definitely experiencing more positive. So, you know, I don't mind spirits in the negative. It's a great story for other other people. And it, it, you know, hardens my belief in the spiritual world, which, you know, it doesn't have to, other people don't have to believe you. It's completely subjective. And for me, I'm just, I'm comfortable in my beliefs and what I've experienced. And yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty, I'm all right with it, honestly. Yeah. I, the way I look at it is that you've, you've earned your stripes and (laughs) thank you. a lot of people probably won't ever get the, the opportunity to, to do that. So I do hope things do get a lot better for you because I find you to be the most interesting person, Shannon. You're, oh, thank you. It, it, it has been an absolute pleasure talking to you. And, you know, I feel so humbled that you'll come onto my podcast to share your stories. Thank you so much. It's been great. It's been nice to get them off my chest. Um, and I hope that, you know, if someone else has experienced anything similar or, you know, it'd be great if they reached out. Um, it'd be nice to talk to someone who, who someone else who's experienced stuff like this. Um, and yeah, I hope people enjoy it. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this episode of the Believe Paranormal and UFO podcast. If you have had an encounter and you would like to share it, please get in touch with me. My email address is believepod at gmail.com. Finally, Don't forget to follow us on all our social media outlets and be sure to join our Discord server to talk to other listeners of the show. You'll find all these links in our show notes. Thank you.